Hey, all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren. I'm going to do something really different today. I always like saying that, but I've never done this before. So I'm going to make some charcuterie with Umai Dry's charcuterie kits. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. First of all, you're probably asking yourself, what's charcuterie? If you don't know what it is, it's like dried sausages and meat, uh, prosciutto, things like that, where your meat is cured and then dried and aged, uh, very cut very thin, served with you know cheeses and crackers. It's really big over in Europe, but uh, I like doing it. Uh, never really made my own, but I like using it for parties, uh, get-togethers, things like that. But the uh, Umai Dry, which is famous for their dry aging bags for beef and uh, other, other things, uh, actually came out with some charcuterie kits. They've been offering the bags for charcuterie for a while now, and they've had some other blends and sold some stuff separately. But now they've come out with three different um, seasoning blends and the curing salts. So each one of these contains enough seasoning. This one's got a brazola, uh, brazola, brazola spice uh, blend, which is what I got here. And that's usually made with beef, like eye of round or top round, some really tough meat. And usually what you do is you use the spice mix and the curing salt pack, mix that together. Each one of these combined will uh, cure and season five pounds of meat. So this uh, one pack and this added to this, this is your curing salts, uh, will make you a big five pound piece of meat. So usually what you do is you mix the spice blends together, season up your beef, put it in a regular vacuum bag for about two weeks to cure it, stick it in your refrigerator. This has been going for about three or four days. Um, hasn't been in there that long so it's not really fully cured yet but what you do is you after two weeks take it out of this bag if you want to put a little bit more seasoning on you can but then you use the Umai dry bags to dry it out and just like you would with your if you were dry aging a rib roast or uh, New York strip loin you put them in these bags get most of the air out vacuum seal it up stick it in your refrigerator but they usually go for a good two or three months on these so you want most of the moisture out of your meat you want this pretty much like jerky so that's what these are going to be this is going to be a pretty long process so i don't want you to uh, uh think that this is something you can do you know within uh, 15 or 20 or 30 days this is something that's going to take about three months to do what I've done is I've taken two big uh, eye around roasts and I cut them into four pieces and I'm going to make four sections of this. It's probably going to shrink down a good at least 30 to 40 percent I would say but if by cutting it into different pieces it's going to let me uh, be able to share this with others. I can give some to other people what have you. You're going to want to cut this really thin when you get it done so uh, like I said it's going to you know if you have a five pound roast it's probably going to get down to three pounds by the time it's uh, all said and done so all right so i'm going to let this finish curing it's in the curing stage it's really simple like i said we're in the middle of the curing stage right now so the next time you'll see me i'll be taking it out of the, this bag and putting it into my dry bag so i'll see you guys in another week and a half or so all right i'll be back hey y'all welcome back it's been two weeks, believe it or not, since I put these uh, brujula eye around in for curing, and they're done. It's been just over two weeks, probably you know, 15 days or so, and that's the time they they kind of recommend you uh, you cure these, just in a regular vacuum bag in the refrigerator. That's what I did. I got four of them here. I got my vacuum sealer out here, and I got my charcuterie bags from Umai. So what we're going to do is what they tell you in their instructions. Take these out of the vacuum bags and we're going to wash off the uh, curing mixture really well. 
leave them wet and then we're going to vacuum seal them in the uh, umai bags and then we're going to go back in the refrigerator for about six to eight weeks so let me get these washed off i'll show you how we're going to put them in the bags i'll be right back all right guys i got my eye rounds here um, this was two whole eye rounds i cut it cut them both in half so i got four pieces they give you only three bags in the uh, my dry kit here but I got two sets one of them is a larger um, bag and one of them is a smaller bag so let me just verify that these smaller bags will fit one of these and it looks like it will now these are a little different I guess so they're not as wide as the uh, regular Umai dry bags. It's the same material as far as I can tell. There we go, power on. It's the same material so it will allow the moisture to go out of the bag and it won't let any bad stuff in. So we've already done curing these with the uh, seasonings and now we're just going to dry them. So we're going to dry these in our refrigerator for six to eight weeks i'll probably go more along the six uh, from what i can tell the eight weeks it kind of really gets this thing <laughs> kind of dry but i will uh, i'm going to do these at uh, six weeks i think and uh, that should be fine so of course just like their other dry aging bags they have the uh, this kit comes with the vac mouse and the instructions and your little stickers so you can put your eight your uh, dates on there so you know when they went in and when you want them to come out but this little back mouse here will help uh, get the air out since these aren't like a food saver type bag they don't have any texture on them that's why you use the back mouse because it helps get the all the air out as much air as possible so i'm going to take my smallest one here and use a small bag. And one of the things that Umai tells you is that these are a little bit, um, they take a little longer to seal than a regular vacuum sealer bag. So they usually ask you if you're using a regular vacuum sealer, like a food saver or any cheaper one like that, to uh, double seal it and uh, use the moist function but since I have the Avid Armor here it's more of a commercial I can actually adjust the sealing time so I normally will seal for three seconds I'm going to seal this for six seconds I'm still going to use my back mouse Let me go ahead and put it up here so you can see make sure it's in the channel right ahead and put this down and we're gonna hit start so this seals up now also they will tell you to double seal this ah see that that was a little too much on the seal there so I'm gonna back it down to four seconds and just hit seal so I double sealed it here just to make sure that um, I still get a seal. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> well, I just wanted to show you, these are the large charcuterie bags. So they're actually a little bit longer, but they're not as wide as the short ones. So actually they are about the same width, I guess. Uh, maybe just a little bit. The shorter ones, smaller ones are a little bit wider. These are longer for more like doing pepperonis, salamis, stuff like that. So that's why these are a little longer. So, all right, I got one more of these to do. We're just gonna toss them in the refrigerator and I'll see you guys in about six, six, seven weeks. All right, I'm gonna get these in. I'll see you then, bye. All right guys, here's a pro tip. When you're doing your labels, make sure, you, and make sure you do label these things, even when you're just doing the uh, regular Umai dry bags, just so you know, or you can put it in your calendar on your phone, but it's always good to mark it as well in case you, uh, you know something happens and you need somebody else to check on it for you but when you put these on you know, make sure you put your start date 
and then the date that you want this uh, to come out. So since I'm doing six weeks, I'm going to say I want it on like the 15th of January. So, And since I'm doing four, all these are the same, I'm just going to label one. But when you label these, make sure you don't label it on the meat itself. Do it away from where the meat is because where the meat is, that's where your moisture is going to be coming off the bag all the time. So you don't want it to impede on the moisture coming out. And also your sticker will come off because the moisture is going to affect the adhesive on the sticker. So stick it away from where the meat is. Make sure it stays on and it doesn't impede the moisture coming out of the bag. Alright guys, so I'll, I'll see you guys in January. This will be a long one. Hey y'all, we are back. And it's only been like a month and a half or more. I think I started this, yeah, November 21st. It is actually now the 19th of January so I had this slated to come out on the 15th but you know I'm curing something so um, drying it out so it really doesn't matter if it goes just a little bit longer so this is the brujula that I started with the Omai dry charcuterie back in November and now it's ready to come out really hard really dried out you can tell that um, it definitely got dried out so I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna cut into it a little bit usually what you want to do with this is slice it really really thin with a meat slicer but I'm gonna show you just how hard this really is I mean I had this in the, the refrigerator it got a really good tight seal so give me one second I'll pull one of these out and we'll start slicing into it see how it turned out all right guys I do have to admit I did, I had four of these and I did take one of these out about a week ago to uh, check it out, see if it was done. And it really had still some, a little bit um, red meat in the middle. So I knew it could go a few more days and it wasn't going to hurt it. But hey, there's what the uh, charcuterie bag looks like after over a month and a half so there you go so it's almost two months now so <laughs> since we did this start this on the 21st of November it's now the 19th so two days short of two months and there you go take a look at that really jerky you know just like beef jerky <laughs> very hard and uh, I'm gonna cut it right in the middle if I can this is like I said very hard it's uh, whew, look at that. Still got just a little bit of soft softness there and the red in the middle. But it uh, it's dried out pretty good. Like I said, this is really, really tough on the outside here. And you're really gonna have to slice this really thin. Yeah, I want to kind of show you guys just uh, how you can cut this. You can go ahead and cut this up right away if you want to, but since it's really, really hard, uh, I've read some other places and I got some information from some friends of mine that have done this before. This is called case hardening and it's similar to what you get when you dry age stuff anyway. You're going to get this hard, but, but what you can do when you take these out of the Umai dry bags, you can actually vacuum seal these on a regular vacuum seal bag stick it back in the fridge and it's going to soften up over time so usually about a week or two you can take it back out and you should find that your uh, case here on the outside will soften up a little bit but you still you can slice it up right away if you want to put it on a slicer just make sure you slice it up really super thin uh, just like with any anything like jerky and stuff you want it kind of thin so you're not having to chew a, a whole lot of it up here so but just stick it in a vac vacuum regular vacuum seal bag stick it in the fridge for another week or so and these will soften up and um, be even more enjoyable you can cut them with a regular knife just fine all right guys i'll slice this up i'll be right back i guess i could shave some off here with this knife this is a fairly sharp knife but that's kind of the thinness you want to go for with this And there you go. 
very good. Like I said, it's got that you know, jerky texture on the outside here, but the softness in the middle. The seasonings from the uh, seasoning from the Umai Dry Brajola seasoning, you can taste that, which is very good. And check it out, guys. This, these were you know, pretty good sized eye rounds. You can tell from the beginning of the video, and they shrunk down a good amount. I didn't weigh them. I wasn't going to weigh them to see how much I lost, but you can tell we lost a good amount of moisture on here, and it's still it's cured all the way through, and it's got mostly dried. It could probably go, you know, another week or so, and it would just get rid of more of that soft meat in the middle, but... I think it's perfect the way it is right now, right here. So check it out, guys. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Make sure you follow the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. Check out the Fire and Water Cooking Cookbook on Amazon or wherever you buy books. Check out the Umai Dry charcuterie bags. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again on the next Fire and Water Cooking video.